Hello, welcome to another session of uh, digital pathology slide review, sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. I'm going to talk today about an issue uh, that is uh, somewhat challenging uh, in uh, surgical pathology for uh, new trainees. Um, it has to do with the uh, um, interpretation of uh, stains. And so I'm going to talk about P16 and how that uh, plays into our interpretation of various tests. So how do we properly use P16 staining in GYN samples? Um, the uh, issue here is um, to understand that um, P16 is a uh, marker of a cellular protein that is expressed in both the nucleus and at times in the cytoplasm. Um, it's a protein that is impacted uh, by a variety of processes. But uh, speaking about what the utility is in GYN pathology, uh, I think there are four main uses, and these are really two somewhat related uses uh, that can be useful. So in uh, the lower uh, gynecologic tract, the vulva, vagina, cervix, perianal area, um, P16 is often used as a surrogate for uh, an HPV-related lesion. And since uh, classification of these lesions now is uh, divided into HPV-related and non-HPV-related lesions, this is a useful marker. And we've done other videos about uh, differentiated VIN and P16 and so forth, which I'll refer to you in the uh, 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 notes below. Um, but uh, that question is an important question. And uh, very often in that setting, uh, P16 can be a surrogate marker for HPV infection and related lesions. Now, not all HPV lesions will express uh, P16 in a strong and blocky manner. Um, but uh, the high-grade lesions almost uniformly do um, and therefore, yeah, this is a useful uh, marker to discriminate lesions which have incorporated P16 into their um, uh, molecular uh, structure. Likewise, um, uh, in serous carcinomas, uh, either of the uh, uterus or the ovary, uh, P16 is also strongly expressed, but not because of HPV but because of other factors that have activated those uh, related proteins. And finally, um, the pattern of expression in the uterus um, and in endometrioid tumors in the ovary in conventional endometrioid carcinomas is actually fairly characteristic and can be useful diagnostically in differentiating uh, the various uh, lesions that can be seen. So just to re reiterate, and I'm not a molecular biologist and don't pretend to be one, um, P16 is an inhibitory protein that acts on the cyclin D1 CDK4-6 uh, polymer, which um, under normal circumstances would mediate the uh, phosphorylation of uh, the RB protein and therefore the separation of E2F, which then can uh, augment uh, cell proliferation. So uh, in the HPV infected uh, case, uh, what's going on is that HPV is impacting two proteins, E7 and E6. Uh, E7 uh, competes successfully with E2F um, for binding to the phosphorylated RB protein, or PRB protein, and thus releases E2, E2F to uh, accelerate or enhance cell proliferation. Um, that feedback then leads to upregulation of P16, uh, which is uh, essentially ineffective in inhibiting this protein because uh, there is a second process that's going on. 
Likewise, E6 has an impact with P53, leading to enhanced P53 degradation and therefore loss of tumor suppression. So those two factors going on together can be very useful to understand uh, what's going on. Now, uh, as I mentioned, HPV is only one mechanism that can activate these two proteins. Um, and uh, with serous carcinomas, uh, it's a different mechanism that is leading to the uh, positive feedback and upregulation of uh, P16. Well, let's look at a couple of real life cases here. So uh, here is a cervical biopsy. Um, and as you can see at low magnification, we have some very nice, strong, blocky positivity in areas. Notice though that we also have some areas that are kind of uh, in between, uh, maybe not quite so clear cut. So let's look at this, the positive areas here first. Uh, and you see here that we have both uh, nuclear and cytoplasmic expression. There's no gaps here, maybe a few nuclei that not totally involved, but all of the epithelium here uh, expresses the P16 uh, protein very strongly. In contrast, if we look at this gland here, uh, this is not a positive stain. So even though we have some staining in here, there's a lot of the cytoplasm that's negative and not all the nuclei are positive. So while we may have one or two stains, this sh should not be uh, interpreted as a positive stain if that's your only uh, marker. Now looking down here, likewise at this fragment, um, I think you can see here, we see a little bit of the uh, sort of patchy. Here's a few of these uh, cells that are expressing uh, this, the marker more fully. Uh, and then it's a little bit patchy here with some positive and some intervening negative cells. You should be cautious about interpreting this uh, staining. If this is all you have as positive, certainly it can be a little bit suggestive uh, but as we'll see in the endometrium, it's uh, uh, not necessarily, uh, uh, should not necessarily be considered uh, diagnostic of uh, P16, excuse me, of uh, HPV infection in that setting. Uh, and I think that's particularly true where you've got uh, uh, maybe some metaplastic changes going on. But here you can see a very abrupt change, blocky positive with still a few uh, negative cells remaining. So uh, in the HPV question, uh, strong blocky positive staining is uh, both cytoplasm and nuclear staining uh, is kind of the gold standard for positive uh, results that would be HPV related. Now let's look at this uh, particular case. And I, I didn't point out this, but notice that our um, control here is uh, not what you might think of as a control. Uh, so we have a few glands, we have some stroma, and then we have a surface endometrial tissue. So it actually is showing us three different patterns of uh, positive staining, which is somewhat useful. Uh, this is a very characteristic endometrioid type of pattern with some cells weakly to strongly positive, but most negative uh, in sort of a variable or what I call a splotchy pattern or a model pattern. Uh, other people use that term. Uh, and that's very, very useful in characterizing an endometrioid tumor. Now down here uh, in the stroma, we have a few glands where um, we have more strong positivity, but also a backdrop of this model pattern. Uh, and in this situation, you have to be very cautious about interpreting this as uh, being uh, true positive positivity in the sense of indicating serous carcinoma or HPV infection, because the combination of some areas that are positive and some areas that are splotchy uh, is a pitfall uh, in interpretation of uh, endometrial samples. Uh, you can have variable strongly positive areas in the endometrium, but you should also see these sort of splotchy positive areas. Now, this may have a molecular significance. We're not sure at this point in time. Um, further studies. Notice also here, however, that uh, we're getting some nuclear positive staining uh, in the myometrium, in the stromal cells. Um, and that has been reported in some uh, borderline uh, stump lesions or other sorts of uh, smooth muscle tumors. 
Um, and so it might be an indication that something's going on here. On the other hand, this might just be uh, adenomyosis with some uh, other stromal changes. All right, well, let's look at the uh, main portion of the sample here. Uh, this is a patient with abnormal uh, uterine bleeding who had a curatage sample. And uh, uh, this was quite interesting uh, in looking at this lesion. Um, we see here that there's kind of some strongly positive areas and then this sort of model pattern that we've just described as being characteristic of the endometrium with some positive cells sort of uh, scattered in between mostly negative cells. And then we have these blocky positive areas like this, uh, which are, are clearly just like that other material. Um, what is the significance of this? Well, this is a very interesting question and might be uh, worthy of a research study. Uh, this was uh, categorized as an atypical uh, endometrial hyperplasia with areas of squamous morular metaplasia. And these positive P16 uh, areas are the squamous metaplasia. Now, does that mean that uh, these, uh, this lesion is an HPV-related lesion? Um, well, it certainly could be, because we know that's one thing that activates the uh, overexpression of P16, as we just indicated, but it, there, as we've also noted, it could be other causes as well. And so uh, an interesting finding, but certainly not something that you should interpret as being serous carcinoma or HPV related automatically. Here's another uh, case, uh, another uh, example of this uh, sort of splotchy pattern of staining patchy areas, and notice here how some areas can be quite strongly positive. So if you have an overall pattern of this sort of splotchy pattern, uh, I think you're safe in saying it's endometrioid, but recognize that you do have this pitfall that some areas like the squamous morular metaplasia, or in this case, some areas of the other uh, tissue can be more strongly positive here. And here we'll show the, again, this more splotchy uh, pattern. This was an endometrioid adenocarcinoma with areas of necrosis. Um, and so very nicely corresponded to that uh, finding. I haven't illustrated a serous carcinoma here because that's, uh, again, usually very strongly positive, um, uh, sort of like this so you see here. Uh, but this model pattern uh, should be uh, uh, very helpful in defining a uh, endometrioid type or tubal metaplasia will also give you this uh, uh, pattern. Whereas the strong blocky positivity in an adenocarcinoma should make you think of serous carcinoma uh, of the ovary or endometrium. Well, thank you very much for your attention. I hope this has been useful to you and I will look forward to uh, uh, your comments, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, hit the uh, subscribe button and, and also to uh, share your comments with us. We always welcome your feedback about the topics that should be covered, things that were unclear. We do respond to your comments um, as best we can. And uh, so uh, thank you again for joining us. And until next time, may all be well with you.